Did someone say crochet mouse ears? <gasps> well, yes I did. Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Nicole of Woven Tales Designs. As you can see, I have a brand new tutorial here ready for you to dive into. These are my Ever After Ears, my newest crochet pattern, and I love them so much that I am literally giving this pattern for free here on YouTube just for my viewers. These are great for gifts, these are great for personal selfish makes, and they definitely sell in market. This is an intermediate level pattern. I do need to let you know that. It's intermediate level, but if you're an experienced beginner and you don't mind using some new tools and some new tricks and learning them then this is right up your alley the beauty of YouTube is that you can slow the video down and you can really digest a new pattern in your own time in your own safe space and I cannot wait to share these with you so without further ado let's go ahead and dive right in to this awesome pattern of the ever after crochet ears from woven tails designs before we get started with the making, let's go through our list of materials and tools we'll need to complete our Ever After mouse ears. Right out of the gate, we're going to start with our main color yarn that we'll need for this project. We are going to need a Category 4 worsted weight yarn, and for today's video I chose to use I Love This Yarn in the colorway Parcel and Bow. Always check your yarn label just to be sure that you're choosing a true Category 4 weight as that will affect the size of your ears. We'll need a second type of Category 4 weight yarn for a complementary color. For today, I chose Yarn Bee's Pearl Spun. This is a brand new yarn at Hobby Lobby, and this is in the color Pearl. Um, and always check the yarn label and give it a nice squish just to make sure it is going to be fit for you. We're going to need polyfill stuffing to add to the inside of our ears just to give them a little bit of dimension. You're going to need some scrap fabric to cut a couple of rectangles out of, and that's what we'll use to cover the ends of our headband for our mouse ears. And if you can, try going with a no fraying fabric for this, like a faux leather or cork. We're going to need, of course, a headband. I like going with a one inch wide plastic headband. It doesn't matter what color it is, but I would recommend you find one that is uncovered um, and doesn't have a fabric um, layer on the outside. We will need a four to six millimeter thick piece of craft foam. And I like to use this Eva high density craft foam that I found at Hobby Lobby. This has got some really great structure to it. Um, cosplayers use it to create weapons and armor and such. You will need a stitch marker, of course, and I got this cute little one at Taylor Lynn Crochet Co's shop. I'll link that in the description below. You'll need a 5.0 millimeter hook or an H8 hook, and I like to match my hook with my stitch marker, so that's why you see I have an H on my stitch marker. Cute, right? Of course, you will need some scissors because we're gonna be doing some cutting, but you're also going to be using these scissors in a different way for this project. We're gonna use these to score and mark our craft foam that we're working with. You'll see how we do that later on at the end of chapter one. You're going to be needing a pretty reliable glue gun for this project because this is a mixed media project. We're not just crocheting here. I like to use the Gorilla Glue brand and that's just my tried and true. I found that through other makers as well, like the Lone Fox and XOXO McKenna. You have been warned, I am a weave-in as you go crocheter, so sorry about ya if that's not you, but it is actually really important for this project, so get a nice set of tapestry noodles because you'll probably lose one as you go, <laughs> just like me. And then of course, you're going to need a measuring tape. This is very important because we're going to be needing to space our ears out very, very symmetrically, so we don't eyeball. <laughs> And with that being said, let's get into chapter one of our pattern. Grab your yarn, grab your hook and your stitch marker and your scissors, and let's get to working. With our main color yarn, we are going to create a magic ring to begin round one. Create that magic ring in any way or fashion that you are most comfortable with. 
And then to begin, we will go ahead and work a chain one. And then into the magic ring, you're going to work seven single crochet, which is a little bit different from Amigurumi projects that usually start with a six single crochet count. This mouse ear that we are working on is going to work with multiples of seven. To begin round two, we're going to need to work an increase into that first stitch, but with the first stitch of this new round, you're going to go ahead and take that stitch marker and place it into that top of that stitch there. Let's just get this good habit going now. Finish your increase by working another single crochet into that first stitch, and then you're going to work an increase into every stitch around until you have a total of 14 single crochet stitches. For round three, take that stitch marker out to begin. Into the first stitch, we're going to work single crochet. We're going to grab that stitch marker and put it back into the new stitch of this round. Then you're going to work an increase into the next stitch and then you're going to begin your repeat for this round of single crochet and then single crochet increase. You're repeating that all the way around until you have a total of 21 stitches for round three. For round four, we are going to take that stitch marker out to begin, work a single crochet into the next stitch, replace your stitch marker. Then you're going to work single crochet into the next stitch and then an increase into the next stitch. And then you're going to repeat that single crochet two and then single crochet increase all the way around until you have a total of 28 stitches for round four. And for round five, take that stitch marker out to begin, work a single crochet into the first stitch, replace the stitch marker into that new stitch you just made, single crochet, single crochet again, and single crochet increase. And then repeat that for a repeat. Single crochet three, and then single crochet increase. Repeat that all the way around until you have a total of 35 stitches for round for round six, take that stitch marker out to begin, work a single crochet into the next stitch, replace your stitch marker to mark your spot, then single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, and then single crochet increase. And then you're going to repeat that around, working single crochet four and single crochet increase. You're going to do that all the way around until you have a total of 42 stitches for round six. Once you reach the end of round six, if you're working the child size, you're going to join to the first stitch made. If you're working the adult size, you're going to have one more round of increases to go. And once again, um, if you're working the child size, at the end of round six, you are going to take that stitch marker out, and then you are going to join to the first stitch made with a slip stitch. And after you join, you will go ahead and pull up a long loop 
just so your piece does not unravel. And you would have set that piece to the side if you were only working the child size. If you're working the adult size though, we are going to continue on for one more round of increases. So go ahead and take that stitch marker out and then work a single crochet into the next stitch. Replace that stitch marker to keep your spot. Then work single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, and then single crochet increase. And then that will be your repeat to go all the way around working single crochet five and then single crochet increase. You're working that until you get all the way around to the beginning and then you should have a total of 49 stitches for round seven. And at the end of that round, you will join to the first stitch made. Alright then, at the end of round seven, remove that stitch marker. You're actually not going to need it anymore for the rest of this part of the pattern. Join to that first stitch made, like I said before, and pull up a long loop. And this is going to keep your piece from unraveling. Turn your work over and then go ahead and retighten that magic ring tail in case it came loose. And I take this time now to knot it so it doesn't come loose anymore. I usually double knot it when I'm working with worsted weight yarn. And then take your scissors and just snip off the excess of the tail um, that way it doesn't get in your way for the next step here so we are now going to use this circle we're going to take a break from crocheting for a bit to use this and make a template for our ear inserts on our craft foam because this is a perfect circle size for our insert so go ahead and take your scissors and lightly pressing them into the foam you're going to trace the outside of your circle shape that you just crocheted and you don't really need to press too hard because the foam is very impressionable and those scissors should be sharp enough to do the job in one go. Once you have that roughly traced out, I like to, before I cut my piece completely out, um, just cut off the portion of this that I need. So just a square shape. And then from there, you're going to cut that rough circle shape out and this is one of my favorite parts of the pattern because for some reason I really like trimming up these circles. It's very satisfying to me. Even though it's never a perfect circle, it's still kind of fun. All right, and then with that circle, we're now going to grab our headband because what we'll need to do is make one more cut on the side of our circle here. And we're gonna do that by using the headband as kind of like a guide for that. If your headband has a pretty sharp edge, you can actually just press it into the foam to make an impression to use for your cutting guide. But just in case, go ahead and take those scissors and trace the inside line of the headband onto the foam for that same line. And then cut on the line to make a kind of like a rounded diamond shape cut, I guess you could call it. <laughs> anyway, you're going to make a cut that looks like that. And now we have what looks like almost a full moon shape of an ear insert. So this is what we're going to actually use now to trace onto our foam again. If you were batching, you can make bunches of these, um, but I would only actually make um, two ear inserts per set of ears, just because in case you switch gears and use different yarn, those ear insert sizes are going to be different when it comes to different types of yarns. Once you have those two shapes cut out and you're happy with them, you should have two nearly identical pieces. Those will be amazing customized ear inserts to keep the inside of your ears standing up tall. So once you are happy, set those aside. And for the last round of this pattern, we are going to begin by working a chain two. And then we are going to go ahead and half double crochet into the same stitch as joining. No more single crochets. Work a half double crochet into the next 33 or 40 stitches, depending on if you're working child or adult. And technically, you could, I guess you could count this as a row and not a round because we're not completing the circle here. We're just working until the last six or seven stitches of the previous round. Um, but you know what? 
I call it around because you are going around and you're not going across something. And then at the end of this, um, into the 35th or 42nd stitch of the previous round, you will work half double crochet, chain two, and slip stitch into that, all into that last stitch of round seven or eight. Just like that, we're working into the last stitch. I'm going to chain two, and then join to that same stitch. Just like that. And then you're going to fasten off here and go ahead and like I said, I am a weaving as you go girl, grab your tapestry needle and you're going to just weave that end into the wrong side of your work. And there you have it. That is our first mouse ear base. You are going to work the same crocheting rounds one through eight or seven until you have three more shapes just like this. And then once you have that complete, I will meet you for the next part of chapter one. And just like magic, here are my four identical ear bases. I love using variegated yarn because it looks so cool, like I did a magic trick with my yarn. Uh, you will only need two of these ear bases for the next part of this pattern, so go ahead and set two of those aside. And then we're going to now work an ear strip that's going to connect two of our ear bases together. With our complementary color yarn, create a slip knot that has a six inch long tail. And then we are going to work a foundation chain of three. So chain one, two, and three. And then row one of this part will be worked into the back bumps of the foundation chain, which are those uh, kind of spiny looking parts of our chain. And working into the second chain of the hook, we will work single crochet into the back bump of the second chain. And then into the last chain from the hook, again, we'll work another single crochet into the back bump. Chain one and turn your work to end row one. And then I'll just show you really quick, when we work into those back bumps, we now have what looks to be the tops of stitches on the bottom of our foundation chain. And then row two is very simple and easy. You just single crochet across and then chain one and turn. That's it. And you will work uh, row two repeated until you have a total of 42 or 49 rows. 42 if you're working the child size and 49 if you are working the adult size of this pattern. And if you notice that number matches the amount of stitches we had at the end of round six or seven of our pattern for the ears. All right, and there's some magic again, a completed ear strip, rows one through 49 for me, or 42 if you're working the child size. The next section is going to be working seaming stitches across the raw edges of our ear strip, and then we are also working those seaming stitches into the third loops only of the ear base, um, and working into that last half double crochet round that we worked. If I flip my work over, you are noticing now, if you've seen the backside of half double crochet stitches, there's that back bar, that's the third loop only. So that's what we'll be using to as the second insertion point for our seaming stitch. So pick up that ear strip, we're going to work into that first always, and then the ear base next. Locate that first raw edge, which for me is right into that last place that we did our last single crochet stitch. Pick up the ear base and face the right side of it towards you. Turn it over just a little bit so that you can have access to the third loops and insert your hook into that very first 
third loop of the first half double crochet. Grab some yarn and pull through the third loop and then pull that through the raw edge and then finally through the loop on your hook to complete a seaming stitch. We're repeating that into the next raw edge, into the next third loop, yarn over, pull yarn through both of those places and the loop on your hook. Repeating that again. And then I'm gonna repeat that one more time here for you, inserting into the next raw edge right there, the next third loop, yarn over, pull the yarn through both places and the loop on your hook. And you are going to work this all the way around until you have worked into every single third loop of each half double crochet of the ear base. When you're done with this, I, I'm gonna call this phase one of the seaming because this is gonna happen in kind of three different phases here to break it down and make it a little more digestible. Uh, this is phase one. We're working down the left side of our ear strip and into just the first ear base. So work that up and I'll see you at the end of this. So once you have worked into the half double crochet at the end of round seven or eight, you're going to then now continue and work slip stitches across the remaining raw edges of your ear strip on the left side. Um, you will work five or six of these slip stitches and then into the last raw edge here you're going to be working a little bit differently you're going to work um, a slip stitch chain one slip stitch into that same last raw edge and this is going to create a little corner for us so we can kind of turn our piece a little bit and work towards the right side of our ear strip and then you're going to repeat that actually again slip stitch chain one slip stitch into the last raw edge of the right side of your ear strip. And then finish the ear strip edge here by working five or six slip stitches into the next raw edges on the right side of your ear strip. And this will complete phase two of our seaming. But technically this part, we're not seaming anything. We're really just kind of working around the last bit of our ear strip. begin phase three we are now going to kind of do the same thing we did with phase one insert your hook into the next raw edge available and then grab your second ear base have the right side of it facing you locate that first half of double crochet stitch and insert your hook into the third loop of that first stitch from round seven or eight pick your yarn back up yarn over and pull that through both the third loop only and the raw edge and then finally the loop on your hook to complete that seaming stitch. And then just like in phase one, you're going to repeat these seaming stitches all the way around until you have worked into each half double crochet from round seven or eight. And you should actually have no raw edges left once you are finished with this step. No raw edges should be left. Um, and take your time with this. If I have gone through this way too fast and you're needing a second look at it, stop the video, rewind it, and go ahead and um, play it back on a slower speed if necessary. I will not be offended. Seeming work is definitely um, a new thing for most people. This was new for me when I first got started trying to figure this pattern out, so no worries there. Great job, go ahead and fasten off. I hope you enjoyed this new seaming technique if you haven't done it before. And uh, we now have what we see to be a really lovely beginning of a mouse ear. 
um, those seaming stitches that we made too, those actually create a really nice ridge naturally. Um, you can see when I turn it over here, it's kind of like a little ridge valley area. When we turn our work inside out, um, we will have a resting place for our ear insert to set inside. And then you guessed it, go ahead and weave in that end. It will be very easy for you later to deal with this mouse ear if you don't have so many strings hanging all over the place. Um, and then once you have that finished, you will work up another ear strip and then you will connect it using phases one through three of our seam work here. And then you should have two ears ready to go and ready to be stuffed. All right, so here are my two ear bases. I am turning them inside out. So now we can see our really pretty seamed edge. And we are now going to give some structure and dimension to our ears. So grab those cut out ear inserts and set them on the inside, one each on the inside of our ears. Just like that, like I said, setting it into that ridge that our seaming stitches made. And if you did it right and cut it right, you shouldn't see it sticking out at all. It should just be nestled in there just right, nice and cozy. Now we're going to stuff our ears. So little by little, pick apart your polyfill stuffing so that it's not lumpy. And you are going to add stuffing to either side of your ears, insert on the inside of each ear. And I'm really happy that once you get some stuffing in here, these ears start to come to life. Almost like magic. <laughs> Just kidding, but actually not really. Um, and you can even see, um, I do just a little bit at a time. I flip it over, I do the other side, and then I usually kind of re-examine it before deciding to add more. It's easier to add more than it is for me to take out and rearrange the stuffing. And you're going to do both ears just like this until they are as stuffed as you'd like them to be. I just like a medium stuffing for mine, as you can see, I don't get, a too crazy with mine um, but wow what a difference does that make and then pick them up once they're both stuffed and compare them side by side just to make sure they're pretty much identical and there you have it that is the end of chapter one for our ears we're gonna set these two puppies aside and work on now the bow of the pattern for chapter two all right for chapter two we're gonna grab our complementary color yarn and we are going to create a foundation chain of chain 34 for the child size or chain 40 for the adult size. Once you have your length of chain worked up, you are going to then begin round one um, by joining to the first chain made, but similarly to how we worked the ear strip, all stitches from round one of this bow will be worked into the back bumps of the foundation chain. And that is uh, going to give us a nice clean edge and a symmetrical look to our bow. Careful not to twist your chain, go ahead and join to the back bump of the first chain made. And then unique to this bow pattern, we will not be chaining up to begin every new round of the bow. We will just simply get right to working right out of the gate here. So into the same back bump of the same chain as joining, you're going to work a half double crochet stitch, just like that. And then you're going to work half double crochet into the next 14 or 17 back bumps of the next 14 or 17 chains around.
Then you're going to chain two and you're going to skip the next two chains and then you're going to work into the next back bumps of the remaining chains around, work half double crochet into the next 15 or 18 chains around. And then once you reach the end of that, you will have two chains left. You're going to chain two and skip those last two chains and then you will join to the first stitch made of round one. And at the end of this first round, you should have a total of 30 or 36 half double crochet stitches, and then you should have a total of two chain twos. That's two chain two sequences. Beginning round two here, we are going to work a little bit differently um, than you otherwise would. We're going to work into the front loops only of the stitches of the previous round. This is gonna give us um, some stretch and flexibility of our bow. So work front loop only half double crochet into the next 15 or 18 stitches from the previous round. And again, you do not chain up to begin this round and the next five or six rounds of this bow. It is just going to help us later because this is gonna keep our fabric from slanting since we are working in the round. Sometimes stitches kind of pull pieces to the right or to the left. Half double crochets definitely do that. I feel like honestly the only stitches that don't do that are like single crochet or extended single crochet. But since we're using half double crochet, which is a very fast stitch for me, um, we will be not chaining up to begin every new round. And then once you get to the chain two sequence from the previous round, you will work a chain two and skip that chain two from the previous round and then repeat what we just did from the first half of this bow, working front loop only, half double crochet into the next 15 or 18 stitches chain two, skip the chain two sequence, and then at the end of that, you will join to the first stitch made. And then that is our single round repeat until you have finished six or seven rounds of the bow. Once you have that all finished up, I will see you at the end. Okay, congratulations, you have reached the end of our crocheting for the bow. So now we're going to go ahead and fasten off here with a very long tail. This is going to be a part of our center of the bow. 
So go ahead and uh, fasten off with about 85 inches or 95 inches um, for that fastened off tail. And then we're gonna take our tapestry needle here and we're just gonna weave in that very beginning tail that we had into the inside or wrong side of our work. And um, this next bit, when we make the center of our bow, is completely subject subjective. You don't have to do as many wraps as I do, and you are certainly more than welcome to do more wraps. This is just uh, the magic number that I've come up with for my own style. So if you're looking to have a bigger wrap or a smaller wrap, you can totally easily adjust that to your liking. And once that tail is woven in, we are now going to go ahead and line up the chain two, skip two sequences of rounds one through seven or six. So go ahead, line those up and uh, make sure they're centered in the middle of your crochet fabric. Pinch those together ever so slightly and then take that long tail and start making wraps around those chain two, skip two sequences. And that is going to create after about 25 to 30 wraps, our really lovely bow center. Um, and again, this is so subjective. So I say 25 wraps is great for the kid size bow because it's one round less. Um, and I do 30 wraps for the adult size bow, but that's just my own aesthetic. So you do as many wraps as you think are fine. And look at that, oh my gosh. Flip it over once you have the desired amount of wraps. And then insert your hook underneath those wraps. You're going to take care not to catch any stitches, by the way. Yarn over with the tail and pull that underneath those wraps to have a loop on your hook. Then you're going to, with that tail, yarn over and pull through twice the loop on your hook. And then you have the beginning of a knot. Go ahead and squinch and tighten that down to secure. And there we have it, all tidy in the back. And then, of course, weave that end into the inside of your bow. This part can get a little tricky for me, so just take your time. Um, and it's just because, you know, you need the tail, but then you don't need the tail, so. And there we have it, our completed bow. Go ahead and turn it right over and fluff it out a bit. Pull at those chain twos to kind of recenter them if you need it. And we have a cute little bow. Set that aside and we will move on now to the best part of this pattern, which is chapter three, the assembly. Beginning right away with chapter three, we are going to need our headband, our main color yarn, and we are going to need that glue gun all warmed up, ready to go. Um, you are going to do any gluing for this part of the pattern on the inside center line of our headband. So right away, beginning with a small line of glue, just about half an inch away from the edge of the end of the headband. We are going to then add on top of that our tail of our working yarn. Tapping it, don't burn yourself. And then go ahead and create a couple of small wraps just to get it started. and anchored in and then working over that tail that we just laid down you're going to make some incremental yarn wraps moving towards the center point of the headband and then the name of the game here is slow and steady wins the race i know we're all usually in a rush to make these things but um, you do want to make sure that these wraps are pretty tight and close together just so that they don't expose or miss any parts of covering the headband because that kind of, those edges can be pretty sharp, honestly. And um, times that I've rushed and I've missed spaces on the headband, I have felt super annoyed with it. So go ahead, continuously make those wraps now that we've cleared the tail. Um, and about every two to three inches, I'm going to grab the glue gun again and I am going to add a new anchor point of glue um, and that's just so it doesn't unravel as we go. And I do want to mention, um, as you see here, I'm just adding one more little line of glue before I finish off my last 
length and remaining ends of the headband here. Um, if you need to change your grip at any point, please do so. This is really just wrap the yarn at your comfort level kind of a thing, not do exactly, exactly how I do it kind of thing. And now that we have our first layer of yarn wraps done for our mouse ears, we are going to move on to attaching the ears to the headband. Um, this can be probably, um, in my opinion, the most nerve wracking part because I am very much a recovering perfectionist and symmetry is super hard to achieve, at least perfect symmetry that is. So um, to help us, let's grab our measuring tape here and we are going to work one side of the headband at a time. Take the end of your measuring tape and line it up with the tip of your headband and then go ahead and measure up the headband side six and a half inches. Keep your thumb as a place marker for that six and a half inch point and then go ahead and make a line of glue working from that six and a half inch point down towards the tip of the headband on the center line of the outside of the headband. And that's probably about a two inch long line if I had to guesstimate here. Then take one of your ears and we're going to line that six and a half inch point up with the hinge of our ear and gently place and press down our ear strip onto that line of glue. So um, hold that down for probably about like 20 seconds or so just to make sure that it's very secure and it's not going anywhere. If you've done this correctly, um, once you're able to Kind of close the hinge on that ear it should fall towards the end of the headband not towards the center point just like that perfect we're going to repeat those steps with the other ear and go ahead and grab that measuring tape again line it up with the end of our headband here and we're measuring six and a half inches up the side of the headband on the outside of it Find that six and a half inch point and keep it marked with your thumb there. And then make a line of glue about two inches long, moving from that six and a half inch point all the way towards the end of the headband, about two inches long. And then confidently grab your second ear and then line the hinge of the ear up with the six and a half inch point and gently lay your ear strip down over the line of hot glue. Press and hold in place for about 20 seconds here. And um, it is possible to rip this off and try again. However, we all know that yarn isn't always nice when we try to frog it or rip it out. And now that we're using glue, that is intensified in this section. So just uh, take your time in the ways that you can and it should kind of look like that. Now that we have those tacked down with some glue, we are going to go ahead and just um, get some of these tails out of the way because we need to make a second layer of yarn wraps. So um, to the side I'm not working with first, I just kind of loosely tie the tail to the headband itself. And then the other side, I just tuck into the inside of the ear just to get it out of the way in the beginning. And just like we did in the first layer of wraps, um, we are going to make a second layer of wraps, starting with a line of glue to get it going. And we are working these wraps with the outside of the headband facing you this time, because we are now going to work over our ear strips and um, kind of just like make all of that super snug and secure. Continue to make these incrementally. They don't need to be as super tight and close together as the first layer. Um, but I would still try to make them as tight as you can. And um, yeah, this part is truly just uh, work at your own pace. Um, take your time. I think the textured yarns kind of give you a little bit more grace with the yarn wraps. Um, this yarn does not give me as much grace. I'm using that I Love This Yarn worsted. And they tend to be a little bit drier um, sometimes, depending on the colorway. So this one is definitely not any different from that remark. <laughs> and uh, we're working towards the end of our ear strip here with our yarn wraps. So when you get to the first ear strip here, when you have just about maybe, I would say three quarters of an inch to about an inch left of space to wrap, you are going to add one last anchor point of glue right there. Perfect. 
and then continue to make yarn wraps all the way up until you get to the ear strip. And actually, I usually, you're gonna see this in a second, I usually make a couple of uh, yarn wraps here that go a little bit underneath the very edge of the ear strip, and you'll see why in a second. So the name of the game is a continuous yarn wrap, and you don't want any breaks in it. So yeah, you kind of see I kind of wedge and sneak a couple of extra wraps underneath there. Alrighty, so with that all wrapped up, we're going to move on to covering the ear strip here. So take that tail and now you can wrap that and kind of tie it to the headband so that it's out of your way now that we're moving towards the ear base, or excuse me, towards the center point. And um, this is where it gets a little finicky, so take your time. I'm skipping over about a quarter of an inch to half an inch of the edge of the ear strip here. And that is a very important part. Please don't cover that side up, um, that very edge there. It kind of, it's like peekabooing right now because you're gonna use that later with our six inch longs. Uh, you're going to use that later with our six inch long tails. Continue to make those wraps all the way around, covering your ear strip incrementally, tight, tight, tight. Um, you don't want this peeking out from your ear side. So um, this part is very important to kind of take your time. You're gonna see me get a little cumbersome with my yarn wraps here and it's actually purely just because I'm filming. If I was doing this um, just sitting down on my couch or at my workstation, um, this would not be as awkward to watch. <laughs> Work those yarn wraps uh, until you have zero ear strip left to cover. And I always make one more extra just in case. <laughs> and then you are going to now close that ear over your ear strip. Great. Add a anchor point of glue to the center line of the headband just outside the ear, just like that. And then you are going to continue to make your yarn wraps going over that new little anchor of glue, anchor line of glue. And um, this part can get a little finicky just at the start, but take your time and incrementally make those wraps like before. You are also working now towards the center point of the headband. And once you reach your center point of the headband here between the two ears, you are going to go ahead and regrip and flip your work just so that it's a little easier to finish the second half of these yarn wraps. Like I said, flip your work over and you're going to continue making yarn wraps going through to that next ear here, working over the ear strip just like that, and then down the side of the headband towards the end. Here I am making my last set of wraps with my last anchor point of glue. And once you reach this point, you are going to go ahead and snip off the working strain of yarn that you had and I hope you made it to this point because we are getting really close to being done with the pattern. Uh, the next step we're going to be doing is we are going to be sewing the ends of the ear strip together with that six inch long tail that we reserved from the beginning of row one of our ear strip. Go ahead and tuck that main color yarn away. You won't need it anymore. Look at that. Very nicely done. All right, now go ahead and untie those six inch tails from the headband if they're still secured and take your tapestry needle, your new best friend, and you're going to thread your six inch tail with the tapestry needle. We are going to now use this length of yarn to attach the ear strip ends together. Very simply, you can just watch how I do it here. There's no wrong or right way to do this, um, but that's kind of why I give you the um, unworked loops of the foundation chain um, as kind of like a guide 
and line those up and match those with the tops of the stitches from the last row of the airstrip. And as you can see here, I am just weaving that into um, my work and I'm probably just gonna hide that tail on the inside, um, snipping any excess off. And there you have it, that is one side connected. You're gonna do the same thing to the other ear, connecting those ear strip ends together, making sure that they are not going to become unraveled and we will be well on our way to getting those ears completely attached. This next step is very simple, but I need to reiterate something I said from earlier. Less is more. Do not use a lot of glue for this step. It will come back to haunt you. Um, you just see me here kind of like making sure I'm adjusting those ear inserts if I need to, putting that stuff in kind of towards the top of the ear. Now I'm going to simply add a long line of glue directly on top of the side of the ear strip here that was newly wrapped. Take those chain twos from the end of round seven or eight of our ear base. You're going to press those down onto, with the edge of the ear, um, onto the long line of glue, pressing down and kind of a little bit away from you and making sure that the edge of that ear base is now secured and lined up with the edge of the headband. This is kind of a technique that might take you a couple of tries. If you wanna try the pressing down and lining up method before adding the glue for practice, I would highly recommend that. Um, I definitely did that a couple times just to make sure because once again, I'm a recovering perfectionist. All right, and uh, once you've had that held down for at least about, I would say 15 to 20 seconds, you can repeat the same thing on the other side. And um, you can just watch me do it here, but honestly, it's pretty simple. Here we have all of these worked down. We're now going to tack our chain twos with a just a little dab of glue. You don't need that much right here. And I apologize for my camera being out of focus. Um, but I just add a little bit of dab of glue right behind those chain twos from the sides of the ear bases. And I'm holding those down again for about 15 to 20 seconds here. Um, and just making sure that those are tacked down and not kind of like sticking out and that will streamline the size of our headbands. Repeat the same thing for all of those corner points or the chain twos of each ear. And um, then once we're done with that, we will move on to my favorite part of the gluing process, which will be adding our bow. All right, now when we add our bow, we need to first also decide what side we want our bow facing. Um, for me, I like to choose um, usually the side with the most intrigue. For me, that was this side, or was it this side? No, oh, it was this side. <laughs> so go ahead and now you can add a very generous short line of glue here to the center of the headband. I usually put it just in front of the center line Take that knot from the back of your bow and kind of use that as like your centering guide. And I gently roll that onto the line of glue and I press and hold down. I am going to hold this down 
for as long as I can stand and then hold it down for another 10 seconds because this part right here, if you let up too fast on kind of anchoring that bow down, you're not really gonna get um, a good secure point here. So here I am, I'm still holding it down, check me out. And um, once you're happy with the um, anchoring of that bow, you can let go. Um, also, I take the time while it's cooling down the glue, I kind of wick away any that seems to be like seeping out the sides. And that is going to give our bow a very clean look on top of our headband. Perfect. Bring those ends of the bow forward, fluff it out. You can actually sometimes adjust the chain too still from this point if you didn't use too much glue. And then you can see through the back here that we really don't have that much glue seeping out the back. Perfect, look at that. We are almost done. All we need to do now is cover the ends and tips of our headband. So here we go. With our non-fraying fabric, we are gonna cut out two rectangle shapes. Those are going to be the, uh, the dimensions of two inches by one and a half inches. And I usually go a little bit over those measurements to give myself a bit of a grace measurement there. Working one piece at a time, we're gonna fold our piece in half hamburger style so that the one and a half inch sides line up. Then I'm going to make two cuts on those fold line there. And that is going to be our uh, kind of like beginning point to cut off some rectangle pieces from our um, sides of our uh, piece of fabric here. So as you can see, I'm very awkwardly explaining this. It's, it's easier to see than it is to explain, um, but I am just cutting off two pieces of rectangle from the side of our uh, piece of fabric here. And now we have what looks to be a fat T shape, if you will. Then go ahead and make two more cuts. Um, after this, you're going to um, make long triangle cuts out of the side of the uh, scrap fabric here. Just like that, long angles, perfect. And the other side. And I don't know why, this shape always reminds me of the hood of a kitchen um, kitchen stove area. <laughs> so it's kind of like a trapezoid with a rectangle on top. And watch me do this again. I'm folding that shape in half, hamburger style, lining up the one and a half inch sides. On the fold line, I'm making two cuts from the side that are about a half an inch in. And that's my pre-cut here. And then I'm unfolding that and using those pre-cuts there, I'm cutting off a rectangle shape from the side of one half of that fabric piece. Just like that, perfect. And you usually see me here kind of trim, but uh, I didn't for, need to for this piece. Cut off a shallow triangle shape from either side of the other half of it. And then we have two oven stove hood shapes <laughs> or trapezoids with rectangles on top. And we're gonna now go ahead and attach those to our headband. This next section is pretty simple. We're just covering the ends now with those shapes we pre-cut. So go ahead and add a line of glue to the outside of the end of one of the sides of the headband. Grab the winged part of your headband and you're going to line it up with the center of that headband, just like that. Press it down. Um, and center it as much as you can because that's probably going to be the most important part of the, this first um, gluing down section here. I kind of fold the wing sides over just so it kind of like rounds out. Gives me a little pre-fold there. And I'm going to then um, glue that tab down onto the inside and then I'm gluing the wings down on top of the tab. Um, so you're gonna see me go ahead and add glue to the tab and not the headband this time. That's so we don't add too much glue. Here we go. Perfect. Pressing it down, making sure it's nice and secure. And then 
what the last step that we'll have here is just folding these winged edges over and I do apologize when I'm filming this is not the cleanest work that I can do um, just because of the way I'm holding it for the camera but you do get the idea of what I'm trying to achieve here this will end up being um, a lot simpler for you to do take your time with this if you want to practice making the folds on top of the headband ends here with the pre-cut piece I would recommend that before just going ahead and gluing it down um, when I was designing this I actually ended up using a popsicle stick and a piece of this fabric to kind of test it out before um, ruining a pair of mouse ears because <laughs> all of that work and then you can't cover the ends gosh it's such agony but there you go we are going to just fold over that last wing there kind of pinching the tab in so it can be completely covered awesome and then you're gonna repeat those same steps for the other end of the headband. And here I am showing it again, um, my gluing process to finish this part of the headband and we have reached the end of this pattern. I'm really hoping that you stayed to this point because um, you know, that just means to me that you really wanted to get the complete look of the ever after ears. I'm sure there are other ways to cover the end of the headband, but um, you know, I will be revealing other ways as I find them in future videos. So if you've liked today's content in watching how to make the ever after ears, go ahead and subscribe and follow me and hit the bell button just so you can get notified of any new videos that I might come out with. I'd love to have you along my creative journey, adding magic to my stitches in my own way. And I hope to inspire you for future projects. I am such a Disney nerd, um, so I really enjoy making these. Um, and then if you do make your own pair, go ahead and tag me on Instagram with the hashtag Woven Tales Designs or hashtag Ever After Ears. And I can't wait to see your creations and what kind of yarns you use and materials you end up using. The sky is the limit for these ears and they are so fun to make. So thank you for joining me and thank you for coming along and hanging out with me in my creative space today. All right, thank you guys. That's all for me today here at Woven Tales Designs. Thank you for tuning into my channel and seeing how I work up these lovely mouse ears. If you're interested in knowing tips and tricks on how to customize your ears to make them even more magical, check out my pattern shop. I have a customization guide listed separately from the pattern that you can totally go in and purchase. If you feel like you need to get a little bit of advice on how to size up and down, how to work with different yarns, um, inspirational picks on how to get your style to the way you like them, all of that information is in there and it's so easy to access. So. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. I had a great time making magic with you. Have a creative day, adding magic to your stitches in your own way, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Let's get our magic levels up. I've never said that before. Why am I saying it now? Pattern shops on Etsy and Ravelry. Mmm, sound good? <laughs> then come on down. Okay, they are so fun to make. Mm. As you can see today, creativity to mess the best. Uh, do 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 do. Well, of course, I'm saying it now because uh, cut there. I'm filming. Come on, then let's go. And yes, they're crochet, not knit. Oh, if that sounds like something you would be into, come on. Oh, it was me. And let's see if we can do it.